back to the breaking news from the top of this newscast. The South Carolina Supreme Court has temporarily blocked the state's fetal heartbeat abortion law, which outlaws abortions in the state after a person is past six weeks pregnant. The bill had previously been blocked in federal courts, but went into effect after the U.S. Supreme Court overruled Roe v. Wade. WCNC Charlotte's Indira Skiva joins us in studio with more on this decision and another bill working its way through the state house. Indira? Fred, the decision from the South Carolina Supreme Court was unanimous. The vote comes after Planned Parenthood South Atlantic and the Greenville Women's Clinic sued over the fetal heartbeat abortion law. The lawsuit asked the courts to consider if the bill violated South Carolina's constitutional rights to privacy and equal protection by not adequately protecting women's health. Today's decision comes one day after the state's Judiciary Committee voted to approve a bill that would ban almost all abortions, allowing it to advance to the Republican controlled House. Today we heard from doctors on both sides of the issue. Abortion is dividing many, including doctors in South Carolina. Wednesday, some of them spoke before the Senate Medical Affairs Committee just a day after news that a bill banning almost all abortions will head to the House. As a physician, I have a duty to protect that life from the moment of fertilization until natural death. The destruction of human life in the form of abortion is the only legal way to end an innocent life. The bill does allow abortions that would prevent a mother's death, even listing specific medical conditions that qualify. If we want to improve maternal mortality, we cannot limit access to abortion. As it turns out, the risk of death associated with childbirth is 14 times higher than with abortion. In addition to banning most abortions with no exceptions for rape or incest, House Bill 5399 says doctors may face criminal and civil liability for performing the procedure, including losing their license to practice medicine. However, the bill says the woman getting an abortion won't be prosecuted. The number one thing that the bill does is end the practice of abortion being used as birth control in our state. But opponents of the bill argue it's dangerous and invasive. South Carolina has the eighth worst rate of more, um, excuse me, mar maternal mortality in the country. But we're too busy talking about controlling women's bodies to do anything that actually keeps our women and babies alive. And I reached out to the South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson about today's uh, South Carolina Supreme Court decision. He said, quote, while we are disappointed, it's important to point out that this is a temporary injunction. The court didn't rule on the constitutionality of the fetal heartbeat law. He added that he would continue to defend the fetal heartbeat law and will continue to stay on top of the latest developments. Fred. Back. Okay, Indira, thank you. And breaking just into our newsroom, a federal judge has reinstated a North Carolina law that bans most abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy. The judge says the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade erased the legal foundation for his 2019 ruling that placed an injunction on the 1973 state law. Just this week, North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein issued a statement on his ongoing efforts to protect abortion rights in the Tar Heel State. He said he will continue to take necessary actions to help North Carolinians and women in other states get the help and resources they need.